It's summertime and the live it is easy, especially here in White Rock, where we're hosting today's Express. On today's show. The purpose of being a beach hero is to educate everyone down on the beach about the different marine life. Take a beach hero's eco walk. Waiting a long time for my grandson to come here so we could come and learn things about the beach. I've been putting in just tons and tons of miles. Ride along with a tour to White Rocker in training. You won't believe the speeds they're going. Learn a trick or two from sand artist Craig Much. Chewy is a working dog. During the school year, he's part of the Reed program. And meet a local dog with a very unusual job. You don't see dogs like this very often. And What's I, in the bag? Well, a crab, hermit crabs. See and that and more from the city you know, of White Rock. That card is, it looks like an igloo kind of shape. That means that it's a, it's a female cow. Welcome to The Express, I'm Johanna Ward. Today's show is all about one of my favorite summer spots, White Rock, BC, home to super friendly people and beautiful beaches, famous gelato, and a skinny tire bike race that's celebrating its 31st year, the Tour to White Rock. One of the participants is who we're meeting first, who's using this as a warm up for an even bigger race. As a firefighter, Eric Kamika has to be prepared. That holds true for his job at the White Rock Fire Hall, as well as for his extracurricular pursuits. Eric is riding in the 31st annual Tour de White Rock. Anytime you can race in your own backyard is always uh, a great opportunity to take advantage of. Just the community as well, and the, and what the what the race means to the community is just just awesome. So it's just a just a great day and just an awesome part to be a part of the race. Eric is riding in Saturday's Criterium, a one-kilometer circuit that sees riders doing up to 60 laps. It's mainly a speed event, so it's going to be, uh, it's a short course, uh, it's got a little bit of a pitch in it, and it's a, it's a great spectator event is what it is. I've been putting in just tons and tons of miles, and then over the last few weeks been trying to get in um, midweek races and just some kind of more high-end speed. It's remarkable to see athletes at this level competing. You won't believe the speeds they're going, and you won't believe the level of fitness that they're at. And as part of Saturday's event, Eric is raising money and awareness for Shore to Shore, the White Rock Firefighter Association's charity, with the money going to Variety, the children's charity. It's a Cross Canada ride, uh, starting in Halifax, um, ending in White Rock here. Uh, we're hoping to do it in hopefully less than two weeks, uh, 12 to 14 days. Um, there's eight firefighters from here going, as well as one firefighter from West Vancouver. Um, and we're basically going to be working in a relay format uh, just kind of blasting straight across from Halifax right into White Rock here. The firefighters will be asking for donations from the crowd Saturday afternoon. It's wonderful to partner with our firefighters, but it's our White Rock Firefighters Charity Association, and they're raising funds for Variety Club. And what we decided to do was partner because they're promoting cycling and we're promoting cycling. And this way, you're coming out to an international renowned sporting event and it's free and so people are excited to make a donation to the charity and also to the riders so it's a great partnership. I'm Erin Shaw in White Rock for The Express. The Tour to White Rock is on this weekend through to July the 18th. Eric's racing on Saturday and he leaves in early September for the Shore to Shore. And speaking of shores, that's where we're heading to next to meet some more local heroes. I'm Carolyn. And I'm Parker. And we're, we're the, the Beach, beach Heroes. heroes. <laughs> So if you look underneath, see how wide that part is? Well, Tony Stark, Superman, those kind of guys, they're, they're pretty good heroes. People like that, they're out there every day doing what they can to make the world a better place. I love the name Beach Hero. So what's that like? Every day you put on your shirt and you, you become a hero. 
Yeah, it's pretty great. Um, it's nice to have just like a little bit of authority. Like we got the Department of Fisheries and Oceans, so when we're talking to people out there, they take us a little bit more seriously. So you've got power and focus. Yeah, yeah like exactly. <laughs> totally. This guy again. If you look underneath on this crab, see how wide that part is? It looks like an igloo kind of shape. That means that it's a, it's a female crab. Well, the purpose of being a beach hero is to educate everyone down on the beach about the different marine life along our coastlines. So when we're looking under rocks and exploring them, this kind of habitat, it's pretty important that we just be careful when we're lifting on the rocks because there is a lot of really, really small creatures living under here and we don't want to squish any of them. So what we are little saying is we don't rock the rocks. Um, we just lift them straight up instead. So if we have a rock about this size, um, we can just lift it straight up like this. You can see all the little periwinkle snails and barnacles are living underneath there. And also there's um, shore crabs and little things living in the sand down here. I think it's a, called a shiner perch. See how shiny they are? It's a great summer job. It's good. It kind of gives you a sense of accomplishment when you're making the beach a better place for everyone. I love it. I've been waiting a long time. Uh, for my grandson to come here so we could come and learn things about the beach. It's in the bag. Uh, well, a crab, hermit crabs, and well, all their stuff too. Pretty cool. What do you think of being able to come down to the beach like this and kind of walk along with a, a beach hero in an orange shirt? <laughs> yeah, kind of learning new stuff. And it's a perfect day. Yeah, it couldn't have turned out better for us. And not only that, but we have a private tour going on here. So we're lucky, aren't we? Yeah. I think the main message is try and leave everything in good condition as it was or better so that the animals and the different marine life can survive without having to worry about us causing them a hard time. These beaches, I don't think people realize how fragile and how many things are living down here, and we do need to protect them because, I mean, living in the intertidal zone is not exactly easy for all these creatures. I mean, they've got the tide coming in and out, they've got the hot sun, they've got rainwater sometimes, so anything we can do to make their lives a little bit easier. The Beach Hero Tours are free and they meet weekly here at the White Rock Pier and also at Crescent Beach in South Surrey. And the times vary depending on the tides. And I bet the tides and the times of them play into this next story as well, along with patience and creativity and passion. We're hitting the beach with professional sand artist Craig Much. It takes some of this and a bit of this to make one of these, but it's actually not that simple. It's quite vertical right now, and I've compacted it so it'll hold itself up. But, uh, you know, at any minute that could fall, you just never know. But from experience, I kind of know it's not going to. I'll be doing it for 21 years, actually, on this very spot when I uh, just got together with some friends. I uh, really didn't even know what sand sculpture was. And this highly skilled art form has made him plenty more. It's one of the reasons why he's been at it for so long. I call it the Sand Sculpture Institution, and I mean, sand sculpture is, is a creative medium and it's, it's fascinating and all that, but what's more fascinating is all the artists uh, that you get to meet and work with. Because basically you have the same thing in common, to create and enjoy life and be outside and that sort of thing. When I go to a place like uh, Belgium, for example, and I'm working for one month solid with uh, artists from all over the world, uh, mostly Europeans, and even though you may not uh, all come from the same country or all speak English or speak each other's language, Somehow we get along, we have fun in what we're doing. It's equally as engaging for the public. Here, the process is just as captivating as the finished product. Really refreshing to come down here and see somebody be so creative. It comes naturally for Craig, who has a background as a graphic artist, but the sand sculpting community is diverse. It attracts uh, different people, people that want to get out and do something else different in life. A lot of my friends have uh, full-time jobs. Some are dentists, some are lawyers, some are just full-time artists getting out and having some fun in the sand. And on days like this, who could resist? This is just so humanly basic as to create in sand. I guess that's what people still find fascinating about it. In White Rock, I'm Peter Kim for The Express.
You can learn more about Craig, his artwork, and his sand advertising online at sandcanada.ca. His next big public display will be an eight foot high Zen garden here in White Rock at the Spirit of the Sea Festival. And we have details on the festival coming up a little later on the show, along with what else makes this place so delicious. After the break, people who are my customers for so many years, it's like a family. Family time at Uli's restaurant. Where are you from? California? No. You know, more variety and um, it's homemade. Fantastic flavors at Dolce Gelato. I think it's the best gelato around, honestly. You're watching local TV on the Express. You girls want to sample something? 